It's one thing when a bunch of YouTube channels come out and talk about the problems in the gaming industry. It's another thing entirely when managers of studios, game directors, and former CEOs come out and talk about those same issues. And October has had a decent amount of those. And honestly, it gives me some hope for what's coming down the pipeline in the future. Because if these guys are talking about it, change must be on the horizon. And that's right, October has had a couple of interviews released through various different articles and various different magazines and various different online places and from different companies. And what we're hearing is we're hearing people who are working in the industry who are hearing what we have been talking about for a long time. Things like fun, creativity, overbloated budgets, you know, the death of double A games. Why does everything have to be a triple A game? What's going on here? And honestly, people who are coming in saying, oh no, no, we can't spend money on that game because that's not safe enough. It's wild to hear industry professionals do this. Now, if you guys haven't heard any of this, let me take you through some of the articles. And I've covered a few of these in videos in the past, but I had to talk about this because honestly, it, when it's one or two, it's like, okay, it's there, but now it's three. Now it's becoming a pattern, and it makes me want to know who's going to be the next person to come out and talk about this. So starting off all the way on October 4th from IGN, we had Tim Willits from uh, Space Marine 2. Uh, sorry about all the ads, guys. I don't pay for any of this stuff, so we're going to get ads. But Tim Willits, uh, the chief creative officer of Saber Interactive, had this to say, and he had quite a lot to say, but one of the things that really everybody was keying in on is, we don't need to sell 4 million units to make it, Space Marines 2, a success, Will it said. There are many games, sadly, especially out of North American developers, where if you do not sell 5 million copies, you're a failure. I mean, what business are we in where you fail if you sell less than 5 million? There are examples like that, and we do not want to be that business. We want to be a developer that focuses is on the core experience, what makes games actually fun, and then do it really well and make it affordably. Boy, howdy, they didn't spend $400 million to produce a game that was pretty generic and nobody really wanted anymore? What? Who, who could have thunk it, ladies and gentlemen? And that's just the first take that makes me hopeful for gaming future. Moving over here to PC Gamer. Sorry, it's a little bit wonky on the screen. Let me adjust that. There we go. All right. Uh, Katsura Hashino, who is the game director of like Persona and the new Metaphor Refantasio, in October 14th over on PC Gamer, said this he then adds i feel like you have to have these super highly polished games that look like they were designed by a bunch of people in a ceo boardroom that doesn't really excite me it doesn't really interest me and then to follow that up the final thing that i thought was absolutely insane to hear which really ties into this here is sean layden the former ceo of sony interactive entertainment says this, and this is over on Eurogamer.net. He says, today the entry cost for making a AAA game is in the triple digit millions now. I think naturally risk tolerance drops and you're looking at sequels. You're looking at copycats because the finance guys who draw the line say, well, if Fortnite made this much money in this amount of time, my Fortnite knockoff can make this amount of money in that amount of time. We're seeing a collapse of creativity in games today with studio uh, consolidation and the high cost of production. Furthermore, he said, AA is gone, which he described as a threat to the ecosystem. Now, all of that being said, I cannot believe that we're hearing this from industry leaders in the gaming world. I mean, this is crazy. This is th this this is awesome to hear. As as a gamer myself, one of the things that I do is I'm on a limited budget. I wait for my buddies to oftentimes check out games, and I wait for their feedback. If they say, "Dude, you've got to check it out, man. You've got to check this game out. It's so good." And then if I have the money, I spend my money on that game because I trust my friends. But a lot of times. The games that have been coming out lately, I get middling reviews from my friends. They're like, eh, it didn't really do anything that, you know, the first game did, and it didn't do anything better. And it's just kind of a rehash, and they're like, I can't really see 
you know, why, you know, this was an advancement. And honestly, I think that word of mouth is really spreading because again, to what Sean Layden said, creativity is being lost. It's all about sequels. It's all about knockoffs. It's all about this other stuff. And when you have the gaming community that is still alive and well, and a lot of us are still talking with our friends who do this stuff because we like to play games with our friends and our friends are going, yeah, not really worth the money, dude. Save your money. We'll, we'll figure out the next one. That's a big hit to a lot of these studios that don't seem to understand that the $60 game really isn't going to be for everyone. Now, one of the interesting things that I think we're starting to see is a trend in the industry to go back in time to getting solid core game mechanics. Actually, in the article that I showed you earlier, Tim Willits talks about how when Space Marine 2 was in development, they wanted to find that core mechanic double down on that core mechanic and make sure that it was fun. In fact, they wanted to make sure that the moment to moment interaction that you as a gamer had with the game is something that mattered and it was entertaining the entire time you were interacting with Space Marine 2. And to be honest, my buddy and I, we had a night, we had a night where both of us could play it. We played it together. Neither of us have touched it since because we want to continue going on that journey of Space Marine 2 and hang out like we used to. It's absolutely fantastic to see stuff like that. In addition to that, this year has brought us a lot of games that just surprise the industry, I think. You know, from Power World launching in late January, early February, we got Hell Divers later on. I mean, the, eh, during the summertime period, I don't remember a lot of games that people were really excited about, but then all of a sudden you got Black Myth Wukong, you got Space Marine 2, and you got Astrobot just back to back to back. And then now all of a sudden Metaphor Refantasio, which a lot of people are touting could possibly be game of the year and people are just loving it. In addition to that, we're seeing gameplay styles that we, we haven't seen in a long time. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 came out a little over a year ago, and who would have thought a turn-based action game where you're like rolling the dice would have done well? And then who would have thought that a Pokemon-style knockoff game would have done well? And then who would have thought that an over-the-shoulder third-person Gears of War knockoff like Space Marine 2 would have done well? And then, oh, Metaphor Refantasio. It's almost like gamers over the last 10 or 15 years really haven't changed what we like. You know, we don't care about the, the great open world and how much we can do in a game. We care about what does the game have to offer me? Is it a good time? Can I sit down with it for a long enough time? Are they trying to gouge my wallet? Are they trying to uh, make me pay more than I feel the game is needed? Are they wasting my time? And I think that's a big question. And here's what it sounds like industry heads are seeing this and they're starting to get it that's unbelievable that makes me so freaking excited to see what's coming down you see i did a i, I did a video a while back and i feel like some of this is being touched on here but i did a, a, a video a while back and it was like dei is just a distraction and I listed my three things that I think are more important or were even before, you know, the DEI stuff and all the video games and how a lot of these studios started pushing it. And the thing was is, well, well the first thing is these studios have gotten over bloated. They've got way too many people, way too many cooks in the kitchen, right? It's hard to manage teams that are just that big and they start to lose what's going on. Kind of filled with corporate bureaucracy, right? You've got all these different managers that have no control over the game. And I, I think that's really making games suffer. I think these bloated studios are making games suffer and it definitely drives up the cost for sure. In addition to that, the other thing that I mentioned in that video was the fact that you get all of these studios that are on the stock market, right? They're traded companies. And when investors want their money back, you're definitely not going to take a chance with somebody else's money. Why would you? It's someone else's money. And that leads into people uh, losing their creativity in these games. And the third thing said the third thing that I said in that video was that a lot of these game developers, especially you know in North America, they want to be as popular as like Hollywood stars and things like that. You can kind of see that in social media posts and so on and so forth. And uh, that one hasn't really been touched on, but that's okay. The other two points were, you know, overbloated budgets. Studio size is a big part of overbloated budgets. You know, the lack of creativity, the money pinchers saying, oh no, we can't spend that much money. Why? Because the investors want to know that they're going to get a return on the money that they gave you. 
The fact that we're seeing this, the fact that we're seeing people talk about this now is absolutely awesome. I was kind of worried there for a while. I was like, man, there's there's a lot of like there are game there there have been enough good games that have come out this year. And with the budget that I'm on, I can't buy all of them. I'm buying the ones that I can. I'm going back and revisiting old games that I I, I missed out on because I was having kids at the time. And I'm kind of having a blast. And my buddies and I are having conversations about new games, not just old games. Oh, dude, do you remember this old game back in the day? Oh, so good. God, it was so good. Loved that game. Why don't they do that today? No, dude, we're talking about Space Marine 2. We're talking about Black Myth Wukong, and now we want to pick that up and play it because it just looks fun. It kind of harkens back to the days of like Devil May Cry and God of War. It's a third person action RPG where you go out, you're visiting a new land. Ah, it's refreshing. It's crazy. Oh, and then Black Myth Wukong, apparently it's going to have a disc version on PS5. And guess what? The game is going to be on the disc. The game's gonna be on the disc? You can play it offline? You don't have to sign in? Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? What, are we time traveling? To please tell me that somebody found a DeLorean and they hit 88 miles an hour. I think it was 88 miles an hour. Cause this feels like somebody found a DeLorean and they hit 88 miles an hour, guys. We're going back in time. The industry is seeing these things that a lot of people have been talking about. And they're talking about it in interviews, putting that out into the world. And these aren't like some low level, like developers that have only worked on their first game ever. These are guys that have been around for a while. Tim Willits worked on freaking Halo. I mean, come on, that's insane. Sean Layden, the guy who oversaw the PlayStation 4, that whole run, and a lot of the games that came out on that. He, he's talking about it. And they're all, they're all talking about these things, these issues that we have had as players. And it's like, holy crap. I mean, it took them a while. But they got there. You know, double A games, the games that people have thought were double A, supposedly they've been dying out. But I mean, a lot of people referred to like Space Marine 2 as double A. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3, definitely. I mean, Pal World, that's, is that even a double A game? But it was just a fun experience. I think honestly, if the industry wants to correct, they need to do a few things. One, they need to take some chances on some lower budget games, those double A games, the ones that just are fun for people to play and release 10 of those a year that are worth the $60 every time. They're just fun. They make a bunch of money and then use that money to fund one or two or however many games every five years or so, whatever the release schedule is on those that are the big open worlds. That can be the next Baldur's Gate. That can be the, the next massive open world GTA 6 waiting for that one. Guys, the page is turning. This is good news. You know, for a long time, it felt like the voices of the customers weren't being listened to. It felt like it just didn't matter. There was a big conversation still happening about, you know, is uh, diversity and the whatever version they think diversity actually is, which has always existed in gaming. If that's more important, than the enjoyment and entertainment that gamers have in games. And the fact of the matter is, is when you talk about wanting to have fun in the game, and when you talk about not wanting to be gouged in your wallet all the time for the next microtransaction here and the next skin there, they're finally listening. Guys, I, I'm, I'm genuinely happy. I, I really am. This is, this is awesome. This is a hopeful note. Now, sadly, I decided that I wanted to talk about something that I'm really excited about and really happy about. This video is probably gonna perform like crap. But if you guys have made it this far in the video, do me a favor, share it. You know, share it and be like, guys, this is good news for gaming industry. It'd be really helpful if you would. I would absolutely love it. And I just, I felt like I had to talk about this. And I felt like I had to put all three of these 
these together. You know, the Tim Willits interview, the Katsura Hashino, hopefully I said that right, and the Sean Layden interview. Guys, we're turning the page. We're going to get back to good games. It's going to be awesome. Hopefully more people do what Black Myth Wukong is doing, and they put games on disc. Ugh, that'd be great. I don't think the discs should ever die. Or sell it to me in a chip. I don't care. I don't care. I just want to be able to have the game, plop it into whatever I'm playing, whatever I'm launching it on, whether it's a computer or a PlayStation or an Xbox. I don't know. Maybe they'll... Maybe somebody will erect my... Resurrect... Erect. Resurrect my Sega Dreamcast. I loved that thing. But guys, thank you so much. If you've made it this far in the video, I absolutely appreciate all of you. Before I go, I launched some new merch. I launched the... The harder you smash the buttons, the stronger the attack. The get a life and grow up shirts as well. Hopefully you guys check those out on the screen. If you like those, that's the best way to support the channel. Go pick up a shirt, wear it out, have some fun with it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to hear what else I have to say, there's some videos popping up on the screen right now. Click on those as well. Hang out to hear another one of my unhinged rants. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.